Blessings to you. Live an epistle. God bless you, sir. First one on on tonight. God bless you. Good to see you. What is that? Andre. Andriana. God bless you as well. Good to see y'all. Let me share this on. Let me get this camera straight. In Jesus' name. <laughs> share this on Facebook. Share it on Twitter. I can't see you right now. So give me a second, y'all. I'm trying to get this. Uh... All right. Got that shared. Hope all is well. Back on tonight on another midnight cry. God bless you as well. Good to see you, brother. Prophetess Raquel. God bless you. Good to see you. Y'all come in. Come in and share. Lift up your hearts as usual. I'm trying to get this phone. <laughs> anyway, Lord, have your way. Thank you for sharing on uh, Twitter, man of God. I appreciate God for you. I appreciate y'all new followers. You know how we do. If you've been following me, you know, we, we teach and we minister the word without compromise. So if you if you started getting this word and you started enjoying it, you know, it's nobody but God. Because everybody can't endure. You know, everybody don't like sound doctrine. Especially when you come from the word, people don't like it. They get offended. They start backing up. So like I said, this world ain't for everybody. You know, it's only for those who, only the selected few. God said, my sheep know my voice and a stranger will not follow. So everybody, everybody can't hear this. You know, because one thing about me, and it's not the boast, but if you, if you really know anything about me, if you believe that knowing it on my life, you'd understand, well, one thing about it, there comes a time where when you start ministering truth and for some reason people don't like truth they back up from truth they love lies like they they love the things that make their flesh feel good so and that's what we deal with in this hour remember i was a minister last night i was teaching rather about how the people they they're gonna uh stir away from sound doctrine and they're going to harp to seducing spirits. You know, they're going to get itchy ears. So remember, I was uh, teaching on that last night. And that was a really, a really profound word, really serious word for the people. And, you know, a lot of people don't understand. But I have to teach what God tell me to teach. You know, some messages may be hard to even teach. I say, God, well, God, I don't even know. I'm not even prepared to do a teaching like this because, God, you just spoke this thing to me and I have to be obedient. That's how God does. And one thing about it, when when you operate out of the anointing, when you flow from the voice of God, I, I don't I don't know how to teach without God. So when people say, oh, you did an awesome word, I enjoyed the word and this and that. And one thing about it, if if a real if a real minister, if they know that the glory comes from God. It don't come from me. I don't, I don't teach. I don't preach. I don't prophesy. That's all God. I don't have nothing to do with that. I'm just a willing vessel. I'm just the one being poured out. I'm like a bottle being poured out, being used. So I'm just saying, make it in your hour that just say, God, make me available to be used by you. Many of us, what it is, we're not available to be used. We got so many excuses of why we can't minister, why we can't teach, why we can't go forward in God. We have so many excuses. So when somebody, when you learn how to get rid of excuses and just say, God, here I am. Use me for your glory. Not my glory, God. Use me for your glory. Do everything to please the Father in this season. Say, not my will, but thy will be done. You know, so we have to get in a place where we're steadfast and unmovable. The word of God say always abounding in the works of the Lord. Amen. But we're going to flow without fail. Brother Travis Miller here. You know, want to come on and do a teaching. That's what we do here on Midnight Cries, Monday through Friday. And we flow. We teach God's people. We're taking God's people higher in this season. Amen. And you see the title about the Ichabod 
on the rise. I got this title because God spoke to me concerning the message. And remember how I told you, I don't, I don't minister on my own. I don't teach what I, what I want to. It'd be nice to just be able to teach what I want. You know, but when God spoke this thing to me, I had to be obedient. I had messages written down from what was birthed, uh, birthed out of prayer and what God began to quicken me in my spirit. But what God will do is God will change your whole message. What you plan to minister on and teach on, God will speak to you and turn it around. Now you have to teach a whole nother message that you wasn't even prepared for. So I'm like, God, okay, well, this is what it's going to be. You know, and he spoke this thing to me last night about the Ichabod. And so I went and I said, Lord, I said, I haven't heard this word in a very long time. So I went and I, I went back and I searched the scriptures uh, to see what God was saying to get an understanding. And this is what God begins to do. God will, he will speak scripture, what to go look at, what to read off of, what to flow off of. And then the, the Holy Ghost will do the rest. That's just what he does. That's how he speaks and that's how he ministers to me to get a word out for the people. That's why I say if you teach and you and you really preach and you in God, it's not going to be you that's doing the message. It's going to be him because he's going to give you the word for the people. If you really in God, that's why you say, God, what do you want me to teach? What do you want me to prophesy? What kind of cologne do you want me to put on? What kind of what kind of shirt you want me to wear? I'm talking about you can get in a room with God where you want to know you want to do everything he wants you to do. I'm talking about it's full obedience. God, what kind of pants do you want me to wear? What kind of shoes do you want me to wear? God will do that. God wants that kind of relationship where he can speak to you. Go sit outside. Go take a shower. Go pray. Get up and come pray. Where are you? Open the door. Like, God will speak things like this. And God is very humorous as well. He has a sense of humor. God can laugh. God will talk to you. God will love on you. He even speak to you while you cry different things like that it's about a relationship like i say this is not religion i don't teach religion i teach about relationship i teach about the kingdom about jesus how many want jesus how many want the glory to the book how many want the glory to hit their lives get a relationship with him do you understand and i'm gonna do this teaching on tonight about i'm not rushing it you know i just i, I let god do what he gonna do and nothing I come on and say, I guarantee you, nothing is in vain. Amen. So I, I want to do this teaching about the Ichabod on the rise. And like I said, you understand that God spoke this thing to me and I had to be obedient. So I begin to search the scriptures. And if you, some of you, I'm going to do a little bit of reading. It's not going to be a lot. I read kind of fast. And um, go with me to 1 Samuel chapter 2 verse 27. I'm going to give you time to get it. Those you want to get to grab your Bible, I'm going to give you time. I thank God for y'all coming on. Uh, 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 27. And it's going to be a really good word on tonight. And it's really going to help you understand how you can be anointed and still fall. You can be in a place where God has anointed you and, you know, really put an anointed on you, has really graced you to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Don't get to a place that you think you're not irreplaceable. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're Donald Trump. Don't get to a place that you feel like you're not irreplaceable and that you can't be moved out of the way. Don't don't get so proud and lifted up that you, you're the only one that God speaks to and that you so anointed and I got my mega ministry and this and that. This right here is to keep you humble. To don't say, oh, I'm so anointed that I can do what I want to do. I can live how I want to live and there's no consequences. I beg to differ with you. Say, God, kill pride in me. God, I ask you to lead me. He says, those who are led by the Spirit are sons of God. Be led by the Spirit. Don't get so lifted up in yourself and lifted up in pride that you think you can't fall. Amen. So watch this. 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 27. We're going to flow without fail. He says, now a man of God came to Eli and said to him, this is what the Lord says. Did I not clearly reveal myself to your ancestors 
famine when they were in Egypt under Pharaoh. In other words, what was happening is the man of God came to prophesy to Eli. And what it was, Eli wasn't fully submissive to God. This is what this man did. So watch this. Eli had a price to pay down the line due to his disobedience. I'm just uh, trying to cut it short because we're going to flow. He says, verse 28, he says, I chose your ancestors out of all the tribes of Israel to be my priests, to go up to my altar, to burn incense, and to wear an ephod in my presence. He says, I also gave your ancestors' family all the food offerings presented by the Israelites. Why do you score my sacrifice offerings that I prescribe for my dwelling? He says, why do you honor your sons more than me? And what God was saying is, listen, you take you. He and Eli had two sons. So watch this word. Eli had two sons. So God was saying, why do you honor your sons before me? So uh, little, uh, some of you that don't know about the story, of Eli, Eli let his sons pretty much do what they want to do. Ran the sanctuary and basically just defiled the sanctuary. Somebody that God, I mean, God placed them head over his over his altars and somebody that God uh, placed king and God had anointed. Right. So this is what his sons did. And this is what Eli allowed. He allowed any and everything inside of the altar. Upon the altar. I mean, doing any and everything. And this is what caused Esau, not Esau, but Eli to fall. So he says this. He says, why do you honor your sons before he says sons more than me by fattening themselves up on the choice of parts of every offering made by people of God. So in other words, they were taking the offerings and they were keeping them for themselves. And he says, therefore, the Lord God of Israel declares, I promise that members of your family will minister before me forever. So watch this. They had a promise that they were going to be priests and be able to minister before the people, basically to, to hold down the, the sanctuary. To, to be able to offer sacrifices and they be able to honor God. So what it is, they had to the promise. I'm going to show you, I'm going to watch this right here. How you can get a promise and then God take it away due to your disobedience. One thing about it, don't you realize that you can, you can mess up your prophecy by being disobedient. We saw it, what happened to the children of Israel. Well, the promise was them to enter into the land that flowed for milk and honey. But what the children of Israel did, listen, this is Bible now. I don't flow without the word. This is written. So it says, since you didn't want to hearken to my voice, you didn't want to be obedient. You will not enter into the land that flowed for milk and honey, right? So there was a, a promise that they had received. The prophecy, right? That they wasn't able to enter in due to their unbelief and their disobedience. So this is the same way. He says, listen. I promise that members of your family will be ministers before me forever. But now the Lord declares, far be from me. He says, these who honor, he said, those who honor me, I will honor those, but those who despise me, I will disdain. The time is coming when I will cut short your strength and your strength in your priestly house so that no one in it will reach old age. You will see distress in my death and although good will be done to Israel, no one in your family line will ever reach the old age. So watch this. He let them know since since you want to disobey me, you didn't want to honor me. Nobody's going to reach old age. And this is what he was telling them due to how Eli allowed him and his sons to, I mean, just to defile the sanctuary, to defile the altar. This is what they did. And this is how God got even with them. So this is what he said. Every one of you will be cut off from serving at my altar. I will spare only uh, only to destroy your sight and sap your strength and all your descendants will die in a prime light. And he says, and what happens to your sons? Watch this. Hophni and Phinehas will be assigned to you. They will both die on the same day. So God was telling them, listen, both of your sons are going to die on the same day. And I'm going to let this be a sign unto you. Watch this. This is what's so crazy. How you can be in a place with God. God, he, he anointed you and appointed you to be priest, to, to watch over his flock. But what, what happened is they began to allow anything in the church. They started doing everything in the church. They started defiling the altars. And look at what we have today. Look at how much disobedience is in the house of God. Look at how sin is in the camp now. There's no repentance. There, there's no there's no sincere hearts. Everything is for gain. Filthy lucres now, uh, full of the church. 
You see what I mean? You do what they want to do on the altars, bringing up, uh, bringing up strange sacrifice, offering up strange fire before God. And this is what this is what Eli and his sons have brought into the house of God. So this is what God did. Go with me to uh, 1 Samuel 4. Skip over to 1 Samuel 4. 1 Samuel 4. 1 Samuel 4, uh, verse uh, 14. And he says, Eli heard the outcry and asked, what is the meaning of the out uproar? He says, the man hurried over to Eli, who was 98 years old and whose eyes had fell so that he could not see. So this is Eli. He had gotten old. So he says, he told Eli, I have just come from the battle line. I fled from it this very day. Eli asked, what happened to my son? And so the man who brought the news replied, Israel fled before the Philistines and the army has suffered heavy losses. And your two sons, Hephni and Phinehas, are dead and the ark, and the ark of God had been captured. So remember, God, uh, the prophecy, the man of God prophesied to Eli and told them for a sign unto you. He said, for a sign unto you, this thing came to pass, that your sons would die on the same day. So watch this. Let's move on. And so this is what happened. And the ark of the Lord had been captured. So the, the, the spirit of God had left. So this is what happened. And he says, when he mentioned the ark of God, Eli fell backwards off his chair. And by the side of the gate, his neck was broken and he died. For he was old and he was heavy. And he had led Israel 40 years. So he let this man lose his mind basically he let this man go into insanity and just fall back and and break his neck he just basically committed suicide due to what happened but see this is one thing about it eli had a promise that listen i'm gonna bless you to be priest i'm gonna bless your children to be priests but what happened was since they defiled the sanctuary since they defiled the house of god this was the outcome of it so we're gonna finish up and i'm gonna talk about the title on tonight he says, so his daughter-in-law, and, and what happened was his sons of Phinehas had, a, uh, had a, um, a wife and she was pregnant. So watch this. He says, his daughter-in-law, the wife of Phinehas, was pregnant and near that time of her delivery, when she heard the news that the ark of God had been captured and that her father-in-law and her husband were dead, she went into labor and gave birth, but was overcome by her labor pains. Watch this. And she was despaired. You have given birth to a son. But she did not respond. She didn't even say anything. She was so distressed. She didn't pay attention to what they were saying. She wasn't listening to the nurses. The midwife, she didn't listen to nothing they had to say. So watch this. Verse 21. She named the boy Ichabod, saying that the glory has departed from Israel because of the capture of the ark of God and the deaths of her father-in-law and husband. She said, the glory has departed from Israel for the ark of God has been captured. And see what happened was, the glory had departed from Israel, uh, from um, Israel, from Elijah's, uh, not Elijah, but Eli's house. Rabo Koboshe. And so the glory was departed from them. Due to Eli's disobedience, due to Eli's disrespect to God, due to Eli's disrespect on his altars, not only did, did God take away his two sons, let them die in war. He let them die in war. But the ark of God was captured. And then the, the, the girl gave birth, the wife gave birth, and then named his son Ichabod, meaning a departed glory. And I got this title because God spoke this thing to me about the Ichabod. And there are many churches that the glory has departed from. There are many, there are many people who minister and, and flow but not knowing they done lost God. They done lost God. The glory done left their lives. No anointing no more. Ain't it's a sad thing how you can be operating and not know you done lost God. God took his glory from off of Israel. And so when it took it from Israel, it, it, it left Eli's house. It left that place where they dwell. Took the glory from Israel. Took the glory from Eli. 
only because what he allowed to enter into the house of God. Because they defiled the house of God. So he says, vengeance is mine. So one thing about it, why didn't Eli come to a place where he could have repented so he could still live in the glory? So he could still be in that place, so he can at least be around the ark of, ark of God. Be in that place with God. But since he wanted to be disobedient, God left, let his glory leave. He departed his glory. He departed his double God, whatever you do in this season, God, don't take your spirit away from me. And that's why I say how many people operate and the glory that left their lives. How many Ichabod churches do we got now? Because people do any and everything on the altar of God. Offer up strange sacrifice, strange fire. Fail to fail to repent. So I could I could see if if they repented, God would have had mercy on what they was doing. I'm talking about they were having sex on the altars in Eli's churches. They was doing what they wanted to do, taking the people's money, offering up strange sacrifice. Sounds really familiar to me. I'm going to tell you why it sounds familiar. Because that's what we got today. A bunch of people not repenting. Wanting prophecy. Preaching for gain. Don't want to repent. Don't want to turn. And that's what we well, that's what we have now. That a lot of the, the glory has departed from a lot of churches. Because they didn't repent. Why you can't pack out a service? Why it's like the numbers are getting lower and lower. And I'm going to say this, and it's not to throw shade, because y'all know how I do. Watch, this anointing going to flow. I just let God do what he's going to do. I have patience with God. I let God move in and speak what he wants to speak. Amen. I give God time. So it's sad to be sitting in the church and you, you know the glory is left. You, you know there's no anointing there. You can't feel nothing. I mean, there should be a time where you can at least feel something through music. You can't even feel nothing through music. Stuff that, stuff that should excite you in the church. So now you sit in the church, you know the glory is left. You know there's anointing. No, there are no anointing there. The preacher get up. You're preaching about the same thing. So I mean, you 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 come and you sit, and you you don't you don't feel no anointing. You don't you don't feel God. Has anybody been there? How you could be sitting in a church? There there's no revelation. There's no flow. There's no there's no power. There's no Holy Ghost. I'm talking about these Ichabod churches. Somebody, this ain't the time to get offended. I'm just flowing off what God got me teaching. So I'm saying, yeah, we, we say dead church, but don't you know there could be a dead church but got the Spirit of God there. It might not be many people, <laughs> but they can still get the, the glory that come in, you know what I mean? But I get, I get what you're saying, Prophet Raquel. It's like, I mean, it, it, it's sad how you... Now, now watch this now. I'm going to say this. And like I say, I'm not throwing shade. We're going to talk about the Ichabod churches in America. How you can be in a place and you you, you want to be used in this place. You know what I mean? And you, you, It's not about a microphone with you. It's not about being on the stage and it's not about you get ordination papers. It's not about that. You're just at a place where you're saying, God, use me. But then the church you're in, you know, when you, you, you see the glory and then you leave the church. I mean, due to the, the disarray, due to the discord and due to, you know, what all the, all the gossip, the messy stuff that was going on. One thing about it, God can't move in mess. 
God can't move when you when you the head, when you the preacher, caught up in gossip, caught up in mess. That's one thing why God will take his glory off of church. That's why God will make people stop giving. The leaders are causing the people to err. That's why there's a lot of Ichabod churches. God is tired of people playing around. He's tired of the discord. And so what I sense God saying in this hour, I'm getting ready to take my glory off some churches. There are about to be many Ichabod churches. Not even a sound of praise. That's how you know the glory is gone. When only two people got a praise. But there's 25 in there. But ain't nobody got a praise. You just sit back with your hand folded. Your arms folded. I mean, we see this today. No worship. No hallelujah. No thank you, Jesus. I'm talking about you can, you can hear a pin drop. <laughs> Nickels. And, you know what I mean? That's how bad it is in some of these churches. You go in there and talk about the Holy Ghost. These people look at you like, they, like you're crazy. Because the glory has been absent for so long. God, we need you to return your glory back to the church that once had you. Candlesticks will be removed. I like that. God, return your, your glory back to a place that was once there. And what the sad thing is, to be sitting in a church and, you know what I mean, you, you seeing God move and then when you leave, you hear about how the Spirit of God is absent now. That hurts here. Especially when a place you got filled at. Where you, where you got filled with evidence at. Where you experienced the baptism of the Holy Ghost. A place where the Spirit was moving. Now there's no glory. Only because of what the head did. Watch this. The oil flows from the head down. So now when the head contaminated, everybody else get contaminated from sitting under that word. That's why there's a lot of Ichabod churches, because God is not about to dwell in an unclean temple. First natural, then spiritual. So the natural part is the church temple, right? And the spiritual of the temple is you. I'm talking about you dwelling in you too, but I'm talking about the temple of God, the church building. God's not going to dwell in that. That's Bible. I didn't write that. You need me to show you scripture. I read what I wanted to because it was lengthy, but I wanted to show you about this foundation about the Ichabod churches. And this is what we deal with now. The glory has left the place. When the man of God grabbed the microphone, there's no glory. There's no oil. One thing about it, the anointing has a sound. Don't you realize the anointing has a sound? Or most people, they don't have enough discernment to know when the anointing is there and not there. Some of us just don't know because we hoop and holler over everything. You don't know when the anointing is not there because you don't have discernment. You can hear the anointing. The anointing has a sound. Just like the worship music has a sound. It's the same thing. First natural, then spiritual. There's a sound to the anointing. And what I believe God is saying, I'm getting ready to take my glory from some places and I've already departed from some places due to the non-repentance, due to them not repenting. I don't even, I don't even know if non-repentance is a word. <laughs> due to them not repenting. That's what I meant to say. And what's sad is to have the promise to God bless you with a church and bless you with a ministry and the made a promise that listen I'm going to bless your, your children to be priests your sons to be priests and I'm also going to anoint you to have the promise but mess up the promise by being disobedient and that's what caused the, the anointing the, the glory to leave Eli's house that's what caused God to depart. That's what caused the glory to depart from them. 
and look how he died, he let them die bad deaths because they didn't want to be obedient because they defiled his altars. God, remove the spirit of Ichabod. God, bring your glory back to some people. The ones that have lost your glory. God, refill us. God, revive us. God, take us back to the place where you first received you. Well, I first received you. Well, I first got refilled. God, bring your glory back. God, rededicate me back to the glory. Rededicate me back to a rim with you so I can feel you. Some of these churches, you can't even feel God. You can't feel God. Some of you been in a place like that where it was just, it was no glory. It was no glory. You were trying to understand why, why the spirit's not moving. Why is it like there, there's like a, a, a hindrance in the spirit? There, there's no, there's no prophetic atmosphere. There's nobody praying in the Holy Ghost. There's no, there, there, there's no shifting. There's no nothing. It's like the heavens are shut up brass in the church. There's no open heaven. I've been there. I've experienced that. When you had to sit and watch a place that had God, but then lose it due to their disobedience. Speak Lord on tonight. Due, due, to the, due to how they defile on the altars and due to how they offered up strange fire. To see a place that that was full of praise, praise ringing out throughout the building, throughout the sanctuary. I'm talking about a place where people are filled, speaking in tongues. I'm talking about slain in the spirit. Where the word was just strong. People had an intimacy with God. I'm hearing God speak different words tonight. And what God is doing is God's giving me reasons right now. They lost intimacy with him. They got out of worship. They stopped worshiping him. And see, this is what happens when the glory departs. We, we lose the presence of God. We lose the glory. We lose the anointing. If the truth be told, how many of us have come into that realm of Ichabod? When we don't feel God, the glory is gone. The spirit of prophecy is gone. We don't hear God. We're not flowing. There's no insight. There's no revelation. We don't have no foresight. Your dreams and visions, they're not even there no more. There's no, that you can't even interpret no more. You can't even flow. You don't even have a bubble to prophesy. How many of us have lost God? Can we just be real? Don't you know you can get it back? Lord, you can take everything away from me, but don't take your Holy Spirit. Have you been in a place where you felt like you've lost God? Where you felt like you lost God. I'm about to give somebody confirmation on tonight. It's not that you lost God. You just got up. You got to draw back to a place with him. You didn't lose God. The truth be told, you remember the rim you were in God when you were seeking him. You remember that rim you was in God when you was crying out. You wasn't just praying 15, 20 minutes a day. You was praying an hour a day. You was in a rim with God. Tonight you saying, God, I feel like I've lost you. Sis, bro, you didn't lose him. You just got to draw closer. You know what it takes to get back in that realm. Yeah, God never leave us nor forsake us. We know that. You just got to You just got to tap into a realm with them, Brother Scott. You just got to get back into a place with God. And that's what we do. We feel like I've been to a place where I felt like I lost God. I said, God, what's going on? Why well, I don't feel like there's no glory, like, like there's no anointing. Back of our messages were like 10 minutes and 11 minutes. I called myself going in, teaching strong. 
what it was, the anointing wasn't increased yet. I wasn't in a realm that I was in. Netta, you was on here. Netta, you seen me grow in the spirit. That sister right there tell you how much I've came in God. She'll tell you where I am now in the anointing versus where I was two years ago. I just thought about that earlier uh, last night, uh, Netta, the other, other day, how you was one of the people that was here on the scopes when, I w uh, when nobody was here. You watched me grow spiritually, Netta. In two years, in two years, you watched that. That woman of God sat here and watched me grow in God. There are people who watched me from the beginning. When I first started flowing and first started teaching, they'll tell you about the growth. <laughs> and see, that whole time, I never tell them I never compromised. I never backed up on God. I kept seeking them. I stayed consistent. I stayed consistent. I, yeah, God did a quick work. God did a quick work. But see, I didn't allow myself to stay at the mediocre level. I, I didn't get to a place where I was saved and satisfied. So yeah, be honest with you, <laughs> I felt like there were times where I had lost God. It's not that I didn't lose God. What it was, I wasn't, I wasn't in that realm. I wasn't close enough yet to the glory. I, I wasn't tact, I wasn't, I wasn't quite touching that place yet. I had to get to a place where I could flow without fail. I had to get to a place where I could really hear God, where I had clarity. So now we we experiencing how we we see how the glory has has left a lot of places. Many of you are sitting in places right now where you know the glory is not there. You know it's not there, but you there because God has assigned you to. You're there because God called you to that ministry. Some of you love vocal by shit. God has you in a place where the glory is not there. You know that the spirit's not really moving, moving, but God is anointing you and elevating you, put an anointing on you so you can bring the love vocal by shit, so you can bring the glory back into place. That's why God is raising up some of you now with oil, fresh mantles, new mantles, new anointings to be in a place so you can bring the glory back receive it receive it so somebody say God why you got me sitting in this dead church as prophetess Raquel said <laughs> prophetess Raquel said a dead church and that's why a lot of people call a lot and to be honest with you prophetess Raquel a lot of people call it the dead church they just call it dead because they didn't know the real they didn't have the real definition the real term was it the real term was Ichabod. There's no glory there and you know there's no glory there. Why should I have to go visit another church to experience something? I should get what I need right here. Where I came to to get every morning, every evening, wherever. To be sitting in a dead church, I'm telling y'all, I know what it's like. To be sitting there and not getting fed. God bless you, brother feel like you ain't getting fed just feel like you just wasting away god you got up this gift in me and i'm not even being used i try to prophesy these people look at me crazy it's like there's no prophetic anointing you're you're prophetic the pastor ain't prophetic he they don't prophesy robo kobashi to be in a place where you say, God, I, I want to be used, but God, there's like a hindrance on my gift in this atmosphere where I'm at. Red Boko Babashe. There's a hindrance on my gift. I can't even flow. This, this, this atmosphere ain't prophetic. That's a hindrance on your gift. Because iron sharpens iron. You call Boko Bashe, you can't be sitting in the Ichabod church and you're a prophet. You can't be sitting there and you're a prophet. A prophet gonna stir it up. So that's one thing about it. Don't you know you can outgrow where you at? Because they still at the same level. They ain't growing. I've been there. I've been there to be a prophet sitting in a dead church. 
knowing your gift needs to be sharpened. Knowing you have to be in a place where somebody takes you higher. And like I was saying, don't get it twisted. Some of you, God got you there to bring the glory. Don't get it twisted. But there are some that everybody can't take you to the level you're supposed to be at. You'll know that God, is this where I'm supposed to be? God, I'm sitting in this Ichabod church, this dead church. Ain't no glory, ain't no life. God, what's going on? God, why you got me wasted away with my gift? What's going on? There's a process of what God's taking you through. And see, a lot of us, see, we, we don't understand how the glory can depart from your life. And this is what happened with Eli. The glory departed from his life. Due to his disobedience, due to him letting his sons do what they want to do, run wild, just basically take over the church. And what I believe God is saying, that's why I had to take my spirit away from the churches. They wasn't always like that. Don't get me wrong, some churches are birthed through religion. That's why God can't never never move through religion like that unless them people allow God to move. These, these I mean, this old religion and, and this, this traditional stuff that they got going on, they won't even allow God to move. That's why there's no glory. But there's some churches, what's getting ready to happen, God's going to remove his glory. They're going to move his, he's going to remove his glory due to disobedience. There's no repentance. And that's why I was telling y'all. I was, I was in a ministry where God was moving. God was moving. You, you knew the spirit of God moved through that place. You could feel God all in the atmosphere. But then something happened. The spirit of Ichabod hit that church and turned it upside down. It's a totally different church today. Only because the pastor didn't want to obey God. Started getting too close with the members. Started trying to be like family. One thing about it, if you're a pastor, you can't be friends with your flock and try to pass and pastor them at the same time. That also would kill your ministry. Especially when half the ministry is family anyway. Do you understand? This is what we're dealing with now. And God had me do this word on tonight. I, I thank God for the teacher. Because he really needed it. Like I said, he spoke to me concerning the Ichabod. I had to use what God gave me as far as the word and his voice. That's all I could use. To teach this on tonight about the experience that I've had dealing with the, the spirit of Ichabod and how the Ichabod can ruin a church. I'm talking about a church that had so much glory, so much power, but they allowed this spirit to come in and ruin the church. Ruin the church. And the truth be told, God can take his glory off your church. Because there's no diso there's disobedience, there's no there's no um, obedience, there's nobody hearkening to his voice, there's nothing but strange fire and all this stuff on his altar. God can't move like that. And so we got the word on tonight about the Ichabod, the rise of the Ichabod, and how there are many churches that they have no glory. There's no glory there. There's no anointing. Only because they wasn't in a place where they can repent, get it right with God. I could see if Eli was in a place where he could repent and at least got his sons to repent. They didn't even repent. They didn't even want to get it right. The glory would have Bokobashi. The glory would have stayed upon them. God would have had mercy on them if they just would have repented. I didn't find nowhere in there where Eli repented and he had gotten old gotten old and blind to where he could barely see but didn't even repent so that's why God had to allow a man of God to prophesy to him and let him know what, what was the outcome going to be all Eli had to do is God forgive me have mercy on my sons 
the Spirit of God departed, and then the glory departed. Only because he didn't want to, he didn't want to repent. He didn't want to get it right. So then all of Israel lost out too. The glory left all of Israel because of Eli and his two sons, because of what they were doing. In secret and known, openly. They were openly doing this stuff. So we say, God, remove the spirit of Ichabod from our lives. Let the glory return back. God, don't depart from me. God, don't take your Holy Spirit from me. God, teach me how to be Oshabaha. God, teach me how to be obedient. Take away this rebellious spirit, this, this witchcraft spirit. Everything that's causing me not to move forward in the anointing. Everything that's causing me not to move forward in ministry. God, move by your spirit in this hour. Overtake me by your naboko bashe. Overtake me by your glory. Send the fire, God. Send the ladder rain. Send the ladder rain to my situation. God, take me back to a place where I first received you. God, I miss your voice. God, I miss your presence. God, I feel like I've lost you. God, rededicate me. God, rededicate me. God, rededicate me back to the glory. Back to that place where I first received you. Well, I heard your voice. A place of intimacy. A place where there was fresh oil. A place where there was a fresh anointing. God, bring me back to that place. God, I miss that place. I miss that place when you were speaking to me, telling me to get up and pray. I miss that, I miss that place where you were speaking to me and telling me what to read and what to prophesy. Be all at Walmart and you speaking to me to prophesy to so-and-so, to the cash register. God, at the cash register. God, I miss you. I miss you speaking to me in a way. That was so profound, God. I miss revelation. God, I miss insight. Well, you used to take me in a place with you and show me parables. Well, I had visions. I wasn't just in the outer court. I was in a place with you. God, rededicate me back. God, draw back the backslider in this hour. God, bring your glory back to that church that lost it. This Ichabod church is God restore him in his hour. And God, don't take your glory away. Whatever you do, God, you could take away anything. You could take away money, cars, houses. You could take away my wife. But don't take away the Holy Spirit away from me. Don't depart from my life. God, I need you more than anything. I need you to reign in my life. In Jesus' name. I just want to encourage you all on tonight and bless you with this message on another midnight cry just flowing without fail or delay you know i thank y'all for coming on tonight god bless you sister netta prophetess raquel good to see y'all you men of god that's on here i appreciate y'all always standing in the gap you know i appreciate everything y'all doing in this hour anybody need prayer also if you desire to give you can also give how many of you desire to give on tonight one thing about it I don't ask to give. I don't ask often to give. If you can sow, sow. But if you don't have it, you ain't got it. But I'm gonna say this: If you go to McDonald's and you eat, you eat, you eat at McDonald's. I know some of you just don't go and just, you know, get free food. You don't go in there and eat for free. You don't go in Walmart and and eat for free. Come out with a bag full of stuff for free. You don't do that. So. The table that you eat at, bring something to the table every now and then. Do you understand? And it's not to say it out of arrogancy. It's not to say it out of pride or whatever. You know what I'm saying? If you desire to give, give into the ministry. I don't have no handkerchiefs, no oils. I don't have no soul. You're going to get rich. I don't have that. If you desire to sow into the kingdom, you just wanted to sow into the ministry, sow. Do you understand? Uh, I'm not going to tell you to sow no $1,000. You don't have to do that. I'm not going to tell you what to sow. You know, give of what you want to give. Give your best offering. Give what you want. As God said, God, what do I give to the man of God? God, let me see. 
Let me see what he's seen. You understand? So if you desire to give, give. Uh, you need me on Facebook, Twitter. All my information is on a profile, eh, man. You just click it. And if you need uh, my information, you can also email me or whatever. Like I said, if you desire to give, to give, give as well. Hey, Amen. But I thank y'all. I also have a, a page on Facebook. I have a ministries page, High Runs Ministries. I have a, a YouTube. I have Twitter. I have accounts all over social media. Just a really big outreach. And I, I just, I thank God for that. Hey, Amen. If anybody need prayer, I just want to pray for you and release a prayer over tonight. Brother Scott, God bless you, man of God. Really good to see you. Good to see you. Which one? My email or um, my email or my Facebook? What 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 is what? Because <laughs> I got I mean I got four different accounts. So try to be specific, sis. But anyway, I'm gonna release a prayer. And Father, we thank you. My Facebook, you can go on there, is it's Travis Miller. It's Travis Miller. That's all you gotta do is write in and you can find me. And um, also what you'll see is you see my ministry page connected to it. If you if you want my information, go right here and click. If you go if you click on a profile and somebody help me put this stuff up. Let me grab all my information for you. All right, so I'm gonna read it. If you click on my profile, you can see that it says High Rose Ministries page. I have my PayPal up and I also have my email. My PayPal is uh, Pro, uh, Prophet Travis at 33. And my email is uh, prophettravismiller at gmail.com, amen. And also, if you go to, if you can go to my Facebook account, it says Travis Miller. And what it is, I'm on there with a, a, a shirt like this. And then you, you'll see my face. And on the background, on my background page, it says, I am apostolic. It says that on the back. So you'll see me. I'm easy to find on there. And just go ahead and scroll. If you have an issue, you can also email me. And I'll be able to, I'll be more than, um, more than likely to show you how to get my information, how to get to my profile, and whatever else you need, amen. But I'm going to release a quick uh, prayer. Father, we thank you on tonight. Father, we thank you for the spirit of obedience. God, move for your people, not by power nor by might. God, give your people sweet sleep on tonight. God, rest upon them. God, give your people assurance in this season. Lord, that they'll know for sure, God, where they are in the faith. God, we actually to increase our level of faith. God, give us eyes to see and ears to hear. God, consume your people by the power of the Holy Ghost. God, give them strength in the midst of the trial. In Jesus' name, amen. I just want to bless you all on tonight. I'll be back on tomorrow night, amen. Love you so much. Be blessed.